From Seven Samurai to the Seven Seal, movie nerds like a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else, and that is correcting people. This is Um Actually. Joining us on today's episode, we have Raphael Chestang. Take one. We have Gray Drake. <laughs> Woo, tuxedo. And we have Shane Crown. I've seen a movie. And that is good because today is our movie-centric cinematic episode of Um Actually with a bunch of mm, highfalutin movie questions, the kind of movies we wouldn't normally cover on the show and maybe a couple that we might. Uh, and the three of you are at least a little bit, I would hope, hopefully if you're here, uh, into, into movies. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I love movies about fancy people drinking tea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, not genre. Ugh, gross. <laughs> um, we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll, we'll start this up. I'm gonna explain the rules very quickly. These are a stack of statements. These are incorrect statements about movies. It's up to you to buzz in, find the thing that's wrong and correct me. You must proceed your corrections with the phrase, um, actually. If you don't, I won't give you the point, Jeopardy style. And you can interrupt me as soon as you notice the thing that's wrong. You don't have to wait for the question to finish. Ready? So, White right. knuckle grip on this buzzer. <laughs> Let's do it. Gratefully, Casablanca has yet to be remade, although there have been a few attempts, including one reportedly intending to star Madonna and Ashton Kutcher during the 2000s. That said, Casablanca has been made into two different TV shows and a play titled Everybody Comes to Rick's. <laughs> we yeah. were supposed to have hit the buzzer by now, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna buzz in and yeah. say, I'm um, actually, Casablanca has been remade actually way more times than two because dudes are always leaving ladies in planes. <laughs> <laughs> Including but not limited to Harrison Ford leaving Anne Hage. I'm sure he left her at some point in that movie. Uh, 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 the spirit of Casablanca perhaps, uh, but not not the full, full work, so I can't give you the point for that one, Ugh. unfortunately. Yes, shame. Um, actually, the Madonna and Ashton Kutcher remake was uh, for uh, the early 90s. Uh, no, I, w uh, I was about to say I wouldn't be that picky, but we might be that picky. But that, is not, <laughs> that is not what we're doing here, no. Okay, um, actually, it was supposed to star Demi Moore and uh, Ashton Kutcher? Incorrect. Interesting guess, though. Really Such interesting guess. Such a good guess. guess. Yeah. I don't want to... Well, never mind. You're not supposed to say bad things about celebrities. Say bad... Do whatever <laughs> no, you no, want, no, no, Raph. No. Then I will let them tell me what I can't say. In my opinion, sure. I don't want to see Madonna play uh, uh, Ingrid uh, Ber a role. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want to see Ashton Kutcher play... Oh, no, my uh, God. I don't want to... <laughs> oh, um, actually, not Ashton Kutcher. Ashton Kutcher was not going to be... That was no, the plan. he wasn't. That was be. the plan. Really? Wow. That's shocking. It this is, is shocking. remarkable. And that didn't come so together. What the... <laughs> <laughs> Who shot that down? What 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 guardian angel <laughs> destroyed that? Who can we thank? God uh, wouldn't let it. <laughs> um, well, uh, sounds like we're floundering a little bit, so I might just call yes, it here. Yeah. The direction Please. I'm looking for is that um, the play uh, Everybody Comes to Ricks is in fact the play that Casablanca was based on. Um, oh. So the play precedes the movie, um, uh, not uh, coming afterwards. All the other things are true. Ooh. There were two TV adaptations, including one that never uh, that never got off the ground. Um, well, uh, no points for that one, unfortunately, but we will keep this moving right along. So I'm in first place? Um, you're all tied for first, technically. <laughs> so, so <laughs> if I'm no in one first. scores anything, you all win, which is a weird loophole to this game. Uh, hey, Rob, please guys. check after yeah. every question to make sure you're still in first place. <laughs> Uh, here's our second statement. Since the MPAA began rating films, the majority of Oscar Best Picture nominees have been R-rated films like Schindler's List, Rain Man, and Midnight Cowboy. But there have been some PG and G winners too, like Out of Africa, Annie Hall, and Driving Miss Daisy. Uh, Shane. Um, actually, uh, Midnight Cowboy was PG. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit, man! <laughs> Oh my God! John, John Voight's dingle weights rate way more than that. Way more. No, no. Well, that, I know that's not right. <laughs> that is. So here's the thing, Shane. That is a ludicrous guess, but <laughs> but you have found the thing that's wrong in the okay. statement. Uh, um, so if oh. I'll give you the point, unless someone can tell me the the specific correction. That, um, yeah. actually, uh, Annie Hall is PG thirteen. Uh, uh, incorrect. Fuck. It. Yeah. 
Um, actually driving Miss Daisy is PG-13 because children should not be watching movies about driving. <laughs> uh, incorrect. Uh, yeah, we don't want to teach them things for their for the right <laughs> <laughs> The issue is, in fact, with Midnight Cowboy. Oh. Uh, Midnight Cowboy was not rated R. Oh. Oh, you, um, actually, it was probably X. That's correct. That makes sense. Ooh. That does make sense. <laughs> yeah, okay. Mom, I that, got a point for uh, all right. Was it an X-rated movie? That makes perfect sense. Yeah, Midnight Cowboy was rated X. It's the only film with an X rating to ever win an Oscar. And wow. it doesn't exist anymore, so it, it will remain the only film uh, with an X to win that award. That's so hot. <laughs> <laughs> Is it still rated X, or did they, like, retcon it and make it something else? I don't know. They didn't make it PG, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying to show the kids the Midnight Cowboy. Cowboy. I'm trying to make Midnight Cowboy PG, Shane. <laughs> My kids love cowboys. I thought they should, they should watch this thing. Uh, well, that, that point will go to Gray. Oh. Scooping it from Shane. Oh. So, I'm, so I'm in second place? You are now tied for second place. That's correct. So I'm in second. <laughs> from the clutches of guessing. <laughs> Uh, here's our next statement. Sergio Leone's Dollars trilogy consists of three spaghetti Western films, A Fistful of Dollars, For a Few Dollars More, and The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. The trilogy is also sometimes referred to as the Man with No Name trilogy because it stars Clint Eastwood as the unnamed gunman. Um, <laughs> actually, they're not all spaghetti Westerns because <laughs> one wasn't filmed. That's a in great Italy. guess, but that is incorrect. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the kind of bullshit that we do here. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but that is not correct. Um, yeah. Um, actually, Clint Eastwood is the only person, is one of three people to win two Best Picture Oscars. That is not I a correction. Start, You're just I adding gotta start answering my own questions. <laughs> you can't, I'm just gonna start answering my own You can't pull questions. a politician here. You can't <laughs> answer the question you wanna <laughs> answer. I got a question to ask here. <laughs> Um, Great. um, actually, he totally has a name in those movies. I just don't know what it was. That's uh, correct. What? Uh, um, wow. Uh, he, it, he is, like, people call him, like, the man with no name, right. blah, blah, blah. But in fact, uh, he has, uh, three separate names within that movie huh. because Sergio Leone never intended them to be lumped together ah. as a full series. Uh, um... They were intended to be three separate movies, but the themes are so strong, that's so similar, and Clint Eastwood is in all of them, that they're like, oh, this guy who has three different names, those are just nicknames, and we actually don't know what his real name is. Uh, in case you're wondering, uh, the three names given uh, are Joe, Manco, and Blondie. Uh, and he's wow. even credited as Joe in Fistful of Dollars. So these are, he has a name. Uh, it's just all marketing to make this you think he so has no sense. names. Wow. Um, That's why Lee Van Cleef is two different characters. <laughs> <laughs> I was confused. <laughs> Uh, well, that point, uh, what was that point? Was that Shane or no. Gray? Who I lost track of it. Gray. I mean, Gray, yes. That comes absolutely you. Absolutely Gray's point. Um, very good. Here's our next statement. War is hell and or Disney. In Saving Private Ryan, a German soldier gets the nickname Steamboat Willie by his American captors after he references the Mickey Mouse short of the same name. In Inglorious Bastards, a scene from the Oscar-winning Donald Duck cartoon Der Fuhrer's Face is recreated in live action. And in Full Metal Jacket, the film concludes with Marines marching along while singing the Mickey Mouse Club anthem. Um, actually, I can't imagine anyone marching, singing a Mickey Mouse yeah. theme in a movie. I can't imagine that'd be cleared. That uh, is incorrect. No um, kidding. Get is, out of here. Yeah, there is. Uh, that scene does exist within that movie. Yeah, Shane. Um, actually, uh, Inglorious Bastards did not show the Donald Duck cartoon. It was a made-up movie. Um, you are clearly guessing, uh, but you are... <laughs> Basically correct. Uh, wow! And, and that there, uh, uh, we fully invented the, uh, the 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 idea of Der Fuhrer's face being featured in that movie. It doesn't appear at all. But the other two Disney movies in war, Disney references in war movies are correct. Whoa! Um, uh, well, that point will go to Shane, despite clearly guessing his way into that. <laughs> but that's fine. Sometimes that's how this game works. That's <laughs> how you play it. Yeah. That's how you gotta play it. Um, Nicely done. Blam. Uh, Raph, you're in third place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so bronze. So I meddled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Well, this will bring us to our first shiny question of the game. Our shiny questions are just a little bit different and a little bit rarer, but we're 
you know, it's still worth the same number of points. Uh, we played this uh, a game before on the show called A Book by Its Cover, where we'll, uh, we'll show a cover of a book and remove the title and author and ask people <laughs> to identify it based only on the cover. We're going to do a variation on that here. This is a movie by its poster. Mm -hmm. So on the other side of this board, you will see the art for a movie poster, but the title has been removed. Um, it's up to you, too. You can draw right, right, right onto it, write as many movie titles as you can identify. Whoever can identify the most movie titles will get the one point for this ah. question. All right, go ahead and flip Very those fun. over. Let's take a look at those movie posters. Okay. Whoa. I'm locked in. You're, You're locked. what? Uh, Ref, hurry up. <laughs> uh, okay. I mean, I have, I have nothing. I, ha I have nothing. Uh, so, Raph, why don't you tell us your answers here? My answers were Dr. Strangelove, Chinatown, Brazil, Malcolm X, Movie Town. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I love Movie Town. I wish huh? that movie had been called that. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Huh? Forget it, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> it's a movie town. <laughs> Amadeus, mm -hmm. The Affair, uh, Moonlight, and Being There. All right. Uh, Gray, let's see what you got. All right. So I got Dr. Strangelove, Chinatown. I put Brazil. Uh, Malcolm X, uh, Metropolis is mm -hmm. actually my answer to movie town. <laughs> OK, but what does Metropolis mean? <laughs> Point well made, sir. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Amadeus. I also just put Bad Lieutenant New Orleans because mm. that looks like Harvey Keitel to me, but it's definitely not that movie. Uh, Moonlight and Being There. Great. And then Shane, what do you have? I have Dr. Strangelove, mm -hmm. Chinatown. I said Dark City. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm X, Metropolis, uh -huh. Amadeus. I said Shakespeare in Love. <laughs> Because it's the same poster. You uh -huh. can't, don't tell me it's not the same poster. Uh, Moonlight, <laughs> and then for the last one, I just said, Mr. Magoo. <laughs> Yeah, it like this is, yeah, this is after he falls off the girder. <laughs> you know, you yeah, get it yeah, again. Yeah. I have like so many kind of nouns and adjectives in my head for that one. That yes. looked, and I'm like unbearable lightness of something. Around. So, uh, yes, yeah, so we'll, we'll go through these. Um, uh, Shane, you have six correct. Nice. Uh, Raph, you have uh, seven correct. Ooh. And Gray, you have all but one of these correct. So, Suck it! So you, yeah, you only get the, 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 this one wrong. Yeah, so the, 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 the one. one that everyone got wrong, uh, this one down here, is the piano. Oh! oh God, no wonder I hate pianos. <laughs> uh, and Raph, you were correct in this lesson. That is being there. Uh, yeah, right. So you, you got that one correct. And of course, Movie Town is Metropolis. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Dr. Strange Strangelove or Brazil. High Learn, just stop worrying. <laughs> and Love and the Bomb. Oh, a movie that just gets scarier every time you watch it. <laughs> a little bit more real. Um, well, uh, that point will go to Gray, and he will collect those boards. Ooh, take two. We made a mistake, and you caught it. Here's some of our favorite corrections from you, the viewers. At what's EJ stand for says, um, actually, abbreviations like DPS and MMORPG aren't acronyms, they're initialisms. Acronyms are abbreviations that are pronounceable as words like scuba and taser. Well, what's EJ stand for? Okay. And from the Dropout Discord, Math Geek says, um, actually, ATAT -AT is pronounced at at, and it rhymes with hat hat, as per the show writers. Well, Math Geek, I'm gonna give you the point, even though I don't think that creates a good parallelism with ATST. Frostburner says, um, actually, Lyft only eats nine pancakes. The tenth is a metaphorical pancake as an offering. Storms, you're right. Uh, well, we will now go back to our regular old um actually questions, back into the world of you must proceed with um actually and all of that. Okay. Um, here we go. Here's a real shitty one. <laughs> uh oh. Great. <laughs> the titular statuette from the Maltese Falcon is fictional, but that doesn't make it worthless. The prop that appeared on screen is the real Maltese Falcon, sold at an auction for a total of $4.1 million, making it one of the most expensive movie props ever. And to think the fat man paid Sam Spade only 10 grand for it in the movie. Gray. Um, actually, it was a movie prop, and there's no possible way it could have been four million. Uh, incorrect. The 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 movie prop did in fact sell for four point one oh. million dollars. That person got taken for a ride. <laughs> uh, Shane. 
Um, actually, it's not one of the most expensive movie props ever sold. Uh, it, thankfully, it is. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I don't know what would go for go more than that are a bit more uh, uh -huh. expensive. Uh huh. Um, actually, it's not the real Maltese Falcon. That's, That's correct. Oh. That's insane. That's insane. That's correct. Uh, in the in the movie uh, in, in the movie itself, we don't ever see the real Maltese Falcon because it's revealed to be a fake at the end. Uh, so it is incorrect to say we see the real Maltese Falcon in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And yeah. you were right. It's shitty. a shitty question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a real, it's a real parse the words there kind of thing. <laughs> but that point will go to Raph. Great. Well, we'll move on to our next question here. It's hard to win Best Picture no matter what, but some things really stack the odds against you. The last movie classified as a comedy, as opposed to dramedy, that won Best Picture was Annie Hall in 1977. Despite Roma being nominated in 2019, the last black and white film to win was Schindler's List, aside from a little bit of red in it, and Wings is the only film to win that wasn't a talkie. Um, actually, the last black and white film to win was The Artist. That is correct, and in point of fact, you might say that the last black and white film uh, non-talky and comedy to win was all the artists. Yeah, oh. uh, yes. so yeah, the artist is, is the done. answer to all those questions. Yes. <laughs> Did you see that I didn't dog? Laugh, though. Hmm? That dog is hilarious. Dog? <laughs> it's a, it's a very, a very good boy. Yeah, um, the artist it wasn't got... just one dog, you guys. <laughs> it was a. Fake. They killed many dogs on that set. <laughs> they had to cycle a lot of dogs in. <laughs> Come on, it's movie magic. <laughs> uh, the artist got a lot of hate when it was out. I do admit to liking it a fair amount. Uh, Me too. I, no, yeah. I like it too. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. I, uh, and also like, it, it was no surprise that it would win because Hollywood loves giving awards to movies about, about Hollywood. Movies, yes. Mm. yes, so it's like. It's relatable. Um, actually, the artist <laughs> is not about movies. It's about becoming, uh, uh, getting older and getting, uh, being out of touch. <laughs> Boo. <You just> boo. <laughs> Rap pulls out his thesis paper. And about murdering dogs. Yeah. <laughs> An exploration of the dogs and growing older. The artist. A paper by Raphael Chester. Oh. Um, A paper by. <laughs> that point will go to Shane. Yeah. Um, Holidays can be hectic, but HelloFresh helps keep things simple with recipes and ingredients that cut out grocery shopping and limit meal prep time so you can spend more of the festive season with your friends and family. HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every week, including vegetarian, calorie smart, and gourmet, providing plenty of variety. Skip takeout with HelloFresh's wintry recipes like chicken ramen and shoyu style broth or turkey ragu gnocchi. Doesn't that sound good? HelloFresh isn't just for meals. Their marketplace provides a variety of add-ons for breakfast, desserts, and seasonal snacks like Pillsbury pumpkin cookie dough. And HelloFresh makes the holidays easier. Your delivery is designed to help you cut back on cleanup and prep time and everything else that makes holiday cooking a chore. And their limited edition holiday boxes deliver everything you need to cook up a family feast. No planning necessary. Look, HelloFresh sent me a box and let me tell you, it was actually a pretty nice break for my day to day. I like cooking a lot, but sometimes you just need someone else to do the planning for. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Actually14 and use the code Actually14 to get up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. That's right, 14 free meals and three free gifts by going to HelloFresh.com slash Actually14 and using the code Actually14. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Uh, here's our next statement. It's amazing how much a single line from a film can stick with us. Here are a few classic quotes and the movies they originate from. Casablanca had here's looking at you, kid. Sudden Impact had go ahead, make my day. Raging Bull. No. Had... <laughs> um, actually, go ahead and make my day is definitely not from Sudden Impact. It is, isn't that weird? No, that's from Harry, uh, Dirty not, Harry. It's not what it's, not like the famous movie that that's Dirty from. Harry. Uh, Are you mean? Do you Clint mean Eastwood, to tell me Dirty that Harry. Dirty Harry ripped off somebody else for that quote? Because that is like not even a <laughs> that great was quote. That's like a sequel, right? Go ahead, punk. Make Some impact stars Dirty Harry. He's the in Dirty Harry. Oh, that's movie. what the movie's He's called. called. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll allow it. <laughs> yeah, I'll allow it. I like rap starting. But you're on thin ice, shouting. counts. Yeah. Like, what? What'd you say? I like rap starting by just shouting no. No. <laughs> no, wrong. I Don't do this to me. The mechanics of the game to this yeah. No. No. 
Uh, here are a few classic quotes and the movies they originate from. Casablanca had here's looking at you, kid. Sudden impact had, <laughs> had go ahead, make my day. Raging Bull had I could have been a contender. No! Gone with a <laughs> <laughs> no! So much yelling! Now that one is wrong. Yeah. Take it away, Shane. Shane. Um, actually, I could have been a contender is from On the Waterfront. That's correct. Uh, though, uh, though Raging Bull does have a scene at the end in which uh, they quote extensively from that same uh, piece from On the Waterfront. Uh, it is originates from On the Waterfront. Um, uh, that point will go to Shane, although Raph clearly knew it by his... <laughs> Outrage, outburst of no! <laughs> uh, well, that will bring us to our next shiny question. This is a game that we're calling 21 Jump Streep. Uh, <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> now, Meryl Streep has received 21 nominations for Best Actress or Supporting Actress, but she's only won three times. On the other side, you're, we're gonna, you're gonna see uh, a list of all of her nominations. I want you to identify the three that have gotten the point. Uh, so, that, 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 have, that, have, that she's actually won for. Yes. So, whoever can identify the, th the three winning Things will get the point, and so if you uh, if you get all three, I'll give you uh, I'll give you the point, and I'll say uh, if no one gets all three, whoever can name the most correct ones will get the point. Cool. Let's take a look at these streeps. It's Streep Alert. <laughs> Streep Alert here. Streep Alert. Streep Alert. Look at, Streep alert. <laughs> look at all these. feasting on flesh. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Whatever. <laughs> I feel like I know which ones that she definitely wouldn't have. Shane, you're locked in. You're locked your answer. Locked. Uh, this is very, this is extremely difficult. Yeah, she's very talented. <laughs> Gray is. I'm locked. All right, you're locked. Is I'm not happy about everyone it. Locked? Everyone's locked and unhappy, just yes. as yeah. we should be. Yes. Great. Yes. All right, uh, same as before. Um, let's take a look at your answers, and then we're going to throw the, the correct answers up on the screen here. Okay. So uh, tell, us, tell us which ones you're choosing here, Raph. So I said, out of Africa. The Bridges of Madison County and Julie and Julia mm. is okay. what I said. Gray, what are your answers here? So I put Sophie's Choice. Okay. Uh, I also put Postcards from the Edge. Okay. And then I put Iron Lady because, like, man, she was really great, like, notably great in that. And yeah. I don't think it won any other awards, okay. if anything. All right, Shane, what did you say? All right. I said Kramer versus Kramer. Mm. Sophie's Choice, mm -hmm. and I said August Osage County. God, okay. she was great in that too. You know what? It was probably uh, she probably won for that. That's let's probably. take a look at the, which ones she won. Kramer versus Kramer, Sophie's Choice. Oh, she and did win in Kramer versus Kramer. She uh, did. <laughs> so uh, Shane, you've identified two of those. Gray, you also have two, and uh. Raf. I don't think you got uh, any of these. So, uh, well, she should have won. <laughs> she Look, should we're have. We're not arguing that. So one point for each Woo! of you uh, for this that. one. And we'll collect those cards. You know, even the best movies sometimes have mistakes and continuity errors. For example, this wasn't the tie I was wearing a second ago. If you noticed other mistakes that we made, you can correct us by tweeting at um actually show or by going to the Dropout Discord and correcting us on the Um Actually Corrections channel. If we like your correction, we might feature it in a future episode. We're back to our regular old Um Actually questions here, and uh, here's the next one. The Academy Award for Best Picture has been awarded 91 times, and 10 of those times have gone to movie musicals. Specifically, Chicago, Gigi, An American in Paris, Going My Way, The Great Ziegfeld, Oliver, La La Land, The Sound of Music, The Bro- Yes? Um, actually, La La Land didn't win. They mistakenly <laughs> right. said that it won yeah. and then took it back and gave it to Moonlight. That is correct. What a great <laughs> moment that was. Yeah. Like, oh. Bonkers. So, some people were very angry about that, and I was like, this is incredible. This is just an incredible <laughs> moment yeah. that, yeah. It made me glad that I actually watched the Oscars. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. This is a moment in history. I know that this is a hack joke. But every year, 
I think it will only be funnier if they say the best picture is La La Land again. Totally. <laughs> Every year that goes by, I say like, just do it. Just say it's La La Land. <laughs> I know it's an old joke. It's j but in my mind, it just gets funnier the more time passes. <laughs> and if they did it every year, I would laugh every single year. <laughs> I second that. Yeah. yeah. Totally. So please, this <laughs> this is gonna we're put, this should should go up around the time of the uh, of the Oscars next year. So. Oh, nice. Uh, you've probably already locked in your votes, but you're still planning the ceremony. If anyone from the Academy is watching this, any presenters, please say La La Land has won Best Picture again. <laughs> You'll make me personally very happy. Uh, Giggle with delight. <laughs> uh, well, that point will go to Shane. Critics have pointed out that Orson Welles' legendary film Citizen Kane has a glaring plot hole. The entire plot is spurred by newspaper magnate Charles Foster Kane's last word, Rosebud. However, when he says this, he is depicted as completely alone on his deathbed. There is no one around to hear it, and thus the entire story should never have happened. Whoops. I agree with all of that. <laughs> uh, yes, Shane. Um, actually, there is somebody around. Somebody who, like, rushes in to uh, <laughs> to get his body. What, what <laughs> happened? What did you say? Uh, I heard something from the other room. Uh, uh, you're, well, once again, Shane, you're sort of stumbling your way into this. <laughs> uh, so here's what I'll do. I'm going to say, so there's a couple things going here. One, there is someone who rushes into the scene. Uh, there's like a, there's a nurse, but, uh, but it's after he's already like uh, mm. said, said the things. But there is someone who in the film explicitly says, I was in the room, oh. um, so I will give you the point unless someone can tell me who that person is. Uh, uh, it was, uh, do I have to name the person? It's the dude where he tells the story about a girl and he goes, it, not a month has gone by. I haven't thought about that girl. And he, he's got glasses on. He's like, his, Raph, it, it I wasn't any Joseph of these Cotton. details written on this card. I can't tell you whether it or not wasn't you're Joseph right. Cotton, but it's the dude. He's like, I was in the room, and it was, uh, and, it has, and I'll show you everything about Xanadu. <laughs> <laughs> you know that guy, Rav. I don't have enough information to tell you to, whether or not you're describing the right person. Exactly. But if, it, if it turns out you are, I will give you the point. I'm not having the easy time. <laughs> Very good. Well, here's what I'll do. I'm For right now, I'm going to give it to Shane. If we find out that you are, in fact, describing the right person, <laughs> I will take that point away from Shane and give it to you. Uh, it is Kane's butler who is in uh, oh. who is in the room. And, and when, when he's being interviewed by the reporters, he explicitly says, I was in the room. Uh. We don't, in fact, see him in that scene. So that is true. But... Uh, we can take a little bit of a sort of like, well, just because we didn't see him on film, he said he was there, we can just sort of trust that maybe he was there and just not captured on camera. I don't think that's what he, from what I'm seeing, that does not <laughs> look like the description of the person that, that I'm is not, seeing. That Raph did not do an impression of the There's butler. no glasses for one thing. Oh, no glasses? No glasses. Oh. All right, yeah, it's who not him Who says then. the line, who says, does anyone say the lines were resembling like what Raph said? I remember it was like it was yesterday. <laughs> yeah, ha, girl, not a month has gone by I haven't oh. thought about. Wait, please, in <laughs> character? Yeah. Huh? In in character? Oh, oh, oh. not a month has gone by I haven't <laughs> thought about that guy. <laughs> oh, okay, wait, I see the guy you're talking about. Hold on. Hell yeah. Is oh, that this the Was butler? he in the room? <laughs> this is that was Mr. Bernstein. He was incorrect. Mr. Bernstein. That's Mr. Bernstein, you idiot. <laughs> God, that was some amazing fact-checking. <laughs> well, very good fact-checking. Well, that point will go to Shane, but we all learned a lot about Citizen Kane. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bernstein. Um, this will bring us to uh, the last shiny question of the game here. So this is a game called Needs More Pixels. Mm. Uh, mm. So we've taken an iconic shot from uh, from film, and we've pixelated it all to hell. Uh, there are in, uh, there are in fact four, I think, four levels of pixelation here, maybe five. Um, so the way this game is going to work is you're going to get one guess. You're going to see the pixelated uh, image. You can choose to either buzz in and guess what the image is, what the, what the mo what movie it's from, or you can choose to pass. Uh, oh. And if you if everyone passes, we'll move to the next level of clarity. Wow. So if everyone else uses up their guess and you, you're the only one left, you'll get one more level of clarity, but then you have to guess on that level. Mm. Get it. Cool. So let's take a look at this image. What Blur. movie is this from? Blur my eyes. <laughs> mm. Oh. 
I see a person. <laughs> There's a lot of gray. I remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, it could be a movie with Casey Affleck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that looks just like Casey. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's a lot a of head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a blockhead. Take that, Affleck. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm passing on I this. Have to pass. Passing. Shane. Pass. Pass. All right, let's move one level of clarity. <laughs> Excellent. Oh. Yes, Shane. I'm um, actually. Don't know if I need to say yeah. it. This is North by Northwest. This is North by Northwest. Oh! Let's look at it. Let's look at it. Wow! <laughs> wow! Oh God! Very wow! Good. You earned that one. That My point goodness! Goes to that like, how I, the hell? I almost shit myself. Wow. That was so beautiful. Remember when we all thought it was Casey Affleck? <laughs> that was crazy. Uh, we will move on oh. to our uh, last question of the game. Here, Aww. this is our last statement. So, Shane, you've pretty much clinched it. Uh, however, our last question always concerns real life skills. So nothing to do with uh, general nerd stuff, just something that you might uh, feel a little good about actually knowing about the real world. Uh, so perhaps the most no. valuable point, even though it's still only worth one point. Um, here we go. Movies get us to believe a lot of things that aren't true, but they can also teach us important things about the world. Thanks to film and TV, most people know that they have a right to an attorney, the right to a phone call from jail, and that questions asked during interrogation are only permissible in court if a Miranda warning has been issued before interrogation. Um, actually, are they referred to specifically as Miranda rights? Um, the, the Miranda rights, Miranda warnings, they're used sort of inter interchangeably, yeah. Um, actually, uh... The, it it is is permissible. What? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, well, if you say I killed someone mm -hmm. before the, you get read your Miranda rights, yeah. they can still use it in. Court. Now that is true. This is a little bit of a trickiness of wording. Uh, I specifically use the word interrogation. Oh. Things you say uh, are admissible. You know, it's like you have the right to re remain silent. But if you enter an official interrogation, you have to be read your rights uh, beforehand. Yes, Shane. Um, actually, the right to a phone call isn't... You can have as many phone calls as you want. <laughs> <laughs> just like... I'm going to Shane's jail. Mom. If I ever... <laughs> I'm going to Shane's jail. Just yakking it up. My jail, you get as many phone calls as you want. <laughs> well, Shane, you, once again, you've, you've hit the thing that's wrong, but you've answered with a ludicrous guess. <laughs> uh, it, 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, I'm actually, but also, it's not actually guaranteed. Yeah, th yes, that's the okay. more logical okay. thing. Um, uh, you've clinched the win anyway, yeah. so I'll give you the point. Give it, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, you have no right to a phone call. What? Uh, yeah, it's not. Uh, it's not a right. You do have a right to an attorney. Attorney. So sometimes those can like get a little conflated because like you you might need ah. to contact your attorney. Yeah, but attorney. it's not like you get one phone call. You can. Use, it's not like a phone a friend or it's like yeah you can call whoever you want. You get one phone call. Right. They can choose to be like no, you don't get anything. Deal with it. Oh my God! I this is I actually didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. So, me neither. Oh yeah. no. Well, that is uh, it for this episode. Our final score here. I don't think we got to read them. Rafa is co to coming home with the bronze. <laughs> the bronze <Yeah>. medal. <laughs> and that makes Shane our winner. For Woo! This episode. Hey. Earned it. Yeah. Oh, earned it. Thank you all oh. so much for playing with us, though. And thank you for watching. Join us next time for even more pedantic corrections here on Um Actually. Goodbye.